Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu einer neuen Folge Let's Play NBA 2K18. Und wir sind in einer eng umkämpften Partie zwischen den Boston Celtics und den LA Clippers. Die, wir führen knapp. Meine erste Hälfte war eigentlich ganz gut. 18 Punkte, 3 Rebounds, 2 Assists. Ja gut, 2 Turnovers, nicht so doll. Und die Trefferquote ist auch nicht so prickelnd mit etwa 40%. Wir hoffen mal, dass das in der zweiten Hälfte gerade von der Trefferquote her besser wird und auch keine Turnovers mehr dazu kommen. Dann kann das wieder ein richtig gutes Spiel von mir werden. Und wir hoffen auch, dass wir gewinnen. Ob es klappt oder nicht, das seht ihr jetzt. Viel Spaß bei der zweiten Hälfte. Boston Celtics gegen LA Clippers. Thank you very much. Lou, in the first half, your offense was clicking. What was the difference getting off to a hot start? I think we play with a lot of energy, the ball swinging around. They're using a lot of help side defense. We're just taking advantage of it. And really breaking them down. Thanks, Lou. Back to you, Kevin. Okay, David, much appreciated. And now time for halftime. So we'll be back in just a bit to get the third quarter underway. The start of the third quarter, welcoming you back in a closely contested first half so far. DJ really making a difference here. His points production thus far off the charts. It's only been two quarters. Just a great effort for him for the entire half. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, the defense hasn't had an answer for this guy yet. Just too skilled, too driven thus far. Taking a look at Los Angeles. Gallinari, the three with Griffin at the four. Rivers out there with DJ, and it's Jordan in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. They word against Gallinari, and that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. Now let's take a look at how the shots have been divided up between three-point shots and two-point shots for the Clippers. And the three ball has been in the game plan, and it's been working for him. Having that distance shot in the arsenal, very effective way to spread out the defense. smart D right on him over Rivers will not go this is off the front eye plenty of space and he nails the jumper Rivers has got his team on the board first here in the second half for Los Angeles smart with the ball outside Irving Drains the 19-footer. Irving's got 14 points for the game. Uh, you better D up Irving from the mid-range. He's as consistent as he gets from there. Clippers leading by five. Molinari dishes to Griffin. Shoots from 14. He can't get it to go. Now Boston takes it the other way. Tough loss coming against Cleveland in their last game play. Yeah, they gave up in that one. The, the defense constantly breaking down way too many times. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Disgraceful performance and an issue that might be tricky to fix. Rivers passes to DJ. And again, it's the Clippers from deep. Timely passing leads to assists, and that's been the recipe for success. Now here's Irving. He's got 14. Again, Irving missing. Look, it hasn't happened yet, but he's got time to find his rhythm. And if he does, they can turn this thing around quick. Pass to DJ. Here's Griffin. Pulled the shot a little left, but the bounce goes his way. And it's a 10-point Los Angeles lead. The Celtics have gone only 1-5 from the field since halftime. Very slow start offensively. And the foul called on DJ. That's his first foul. <laughs> Here we 
talk about young players improving their game a lot, but Chris, which veterans in the league have impressed you with their ability to change and adapt their game as they get older? Well, Paul Millsap, I think he's been under the radar and underrated for the last uh, two, three, four years. He's been the best post player uh, offensively on the post, in my opinion, and I think his game is overlooked, and he's a veteran that continually gets better. And, and then other guys that add different parts to their game, like Marcus Saul, uh, being able to step out and hit threes. He's a former defensive player of the year, being able to expand his game on the offensive end. You have to love guys that have the mentality that they can always improve like these two. Time call here. The Celtics decide to talk it over. As the teams head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. We always talk about getting good looks. Here's who's doing the best of it in the NBA. Andre Jordan, number one. He is a finisher. Plain and simple. That field goal percentage just absolutely jumps out at you. It borders on astonishing. They're smart. Taking a look at the scoring numbers right now, he averages about nine points a game. Watch out. Now that he's got his first three of the half, there will be more in store. Jordan, the screen. Gallinari kicks to DJ. Off target from outside. And you could tell he thought that triple was going to fall. Hayward against Gallinari. No good on the three. Oh, man, you can't get much better look from three-point range than that one. That just wasn't in rhythm. Pops it up for Jordan. And they're passing the ball very crisply here. We've gone about three and a half minutes into the third now. Now, here is Irving. He's covered closely. There's a good screen. Hayward kicks to Smart. From the baseline, Jordan with the rebound. Jordan's got nine rebounds in the game, getting it done. Wow, he's really been dragging them down. A nice shot by Rivers. In many ways, a bright, shining decoy out there tonight. He's just happy to contribute when they need him. Celtics trail by 14. On its way from Irving for two. The Clippers grab the miss. Jordan's got rebound number 10 tonight with that last one. Rivers gets a wide open look. And it's good assisting on the play was Jordan. Rivers has got eight here in the quarter. How many times have we seen a possession like that from them today? Ending with a basket coming off a pretty pass. Hayward from outside. That one doesn't drop. So the Clippers will take it the other way. The 19-foot shot. No good that time. Man, right play, wrong result on that one. Generally, you knock those down. Uh, I like the decision they give I mean, That's a shot you want to keep taking. That shot off. Here now, the Clippers. They're on a 17 to 5 run here. Rivers dishes to Griffin. Got him with the pump fake, but couldn't finish. Boston's gotten one of six three pointers to drop since coming out of the locker room at halftime. They set the pick. Irving kicks to Baines. Wants to get it to Smart and does. And it's DJ with the rebound. DJ's got his third rebound tonight. Well, they've been better than good on the glass today, and there is a glaring discrepancy between these two teams in that area. Celtics trail by 17. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. And he's good on the three ball. 20 points for Kyrie Irving. Uh, Irving is a knockdown three-point artist. Sensational at measuring these three-point perimeter shots. And Gallinari kicks to Griffin. Let's it go from deep. And DJ gets it to go on the assist by Griffin. And that's now 24 points for DJ. 
time called here, the Celtics decide to talk it over. DJ really making a difference here. They got to start guarding him out to about 28 feet because he's killing from long range. Some changes here for the Celtics. Tatum comes in for Aaron Baines and Jalen Brown subbed in for Gordon Hayward. And then for the Clippers, Wells is checked in for Gallinari. Teodosic comes in for Austin Rivers and it's Patrick Beverly in for DJ. Kicks it to Tatum. He dishes it to Smart. Takes it from 10. That shot off the mark. And the Clippers will come the other way. And Milos Teodosic, one of the bigger names in basketball, not to play in the NBA last season, Greg. Yeah, I mean, the Clippers brought him over from Europe to help kind of ease the loss of Chris Ball. He's a terrific playmaker who is one of the best passers in the world. And, and not young, but respected by many around the globe. And Beverly kicks to Griffin. And the slam by Blake Griffin. And you can put those alley-oop beads as high as you need to when Griffin's on the receiving end. He, he'll pick it up off the top of the backboard if he has to. Excellent use of the screen that time. Smart's got his second basket of the night. And not his quarter, scoring-wise. Just one of seven from the field. Here's Wells. Offline with his three. Celtics trail by 17. Irving passes to Smart. And so he draws the foul on the shot. A trip to the line to shoot two. And at 6'4", 220, Marcus Smart with terrific strength for a combo guard, Greg. I mean, he can just let out bully most guards and even hold his own against the bigs. Beyond, though, that physical stature, it's his mentality that makes him special. He's a fire breather, J just the type of player the Celtics look for. The first one falls. A six foot four, 220 pounds, Marcus Smart might be the most physically imposing point guard in the league, especially with his fiery approach to the game. The Celtics making a switch here. Larkin's checked in. And so, Smart nails both of them. And you look at the Clippers post Chris Paul. The team is still in a position to compete. I think they had to fill in gaps when players left, but I really like the job they've done overall. I mean, they have good inside and outside presence. Not the same, but they aren't in a, a horrible spot. He feeds it to Tatum. They set the pick. Here's Smart. D right on him. Brown outside. Five to shoot. Takes a three. The Clippers grab the miss. Earlier in the game, they had a 19-point lead. Here's Wells. Sinks the triple. Wells has got himself going there. His first points of the game on the deep ball. And you can see the play calling this half. Another one from distance. Well, that's because they made a concerted effort to get the shooters involved. Now they've built up the confidence. Here's Larkin, defended by Beverly. And he gets it to go as they call the foul. He's on his way to the line for one more. Yeah, exceptional play there to take the bump and still get it to fall. The Celtics shooting their seventh attempt at the foul line in this one. Marcus Morris has checked in for the Celtics. Well, for the Celtics, their trade with the Nets is the gold standard for asset hunting. But a lot of smaller deals along the way fortifying their roster. Yeah, they ended up with the top pick this past year, though they traded out of it. I mean, have a good chance to even get more top picks. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Shoots from 14. A putback, and there's Jordan putting it right back in. Jordan's got four points this quarter. Yeah, and it's the long arms of, of Jordan staying active on the boards for these high percentage putbacks. Morris kicks to Tatum. 
nailed from three-point land. Not the biggest fan of that shot, but he had the space to get it off, so, so why not? Oh, Griffin in position. And count it, and a chance for one more at the free-throw line. And that's as high percentage as it gets for Jordan. He has shot over 65% for his entire career. Hey, Greg, when you look at all the dunks that DeAndre Jordan has on his resume, it's pretty impressive. What's and up? Jordan, I feel, is even underrated with his dunking ability. Very agile. You can see that in warm-ups as well as the dunk contest. His unmatched power when attacking the rim, really unprecedented. He may be the best athlete in the league. Well, we talk so much about what it's like on the floor, Chris, but I, I wonder what it was like off the floor when you were on the bench watching the team play and, and what was going through your head and mind. What did you and your teammates talk about as you were on the bench taking a rest and watching the game go on? It, it depends on which game. You know, if you're in L.A. and, and you see, uh, you know, Eddie Murphy and Rihanna <laughs> walk in, you're going to say, hey, look at uh, Beyonce and Jay over there. Or, you know, um, if you're watching a great play and you see a guy dunk on your teammate, you're not going to get too excited because you're going to whisper to your teammate, man, did you see that? That's crazy. Or, you know, you're pumping up guys because they've been working so hard in practice and it's a guy who's getting his first time to kind of get in and get a good run. So you're cheering him on. And so being on the bench, you know, it's a lot of fun. You have to stay focused and ready to re-enter the game. But part of that job on the bench is to keep the energy of the bench. And that's, oh, oh, that's oh, what I'm talking about right there. Right there. Man, one for the highlight reel. And you see after multiple knee surgeries, Griffin can still get up. Tatum dishes to Morris. Off the pick. And Morris throws it down. Wow, and really, when Morris gets ahead of steam behind him, look out. Just a remarkable finisher. Clippers leading by 18. And Beverly kicks to Wells. Griffin inside, covered by Morris. Good on the shot. 18 points for Blake Griffin. But that lead's only going to keep growing if he keeps shooting like he has so far. Larkin kicks to Morris. There's a minute left here in the third quarter. Tice. And a miss there on the triple. And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting in the third quarter has been brilliant up around 58%. The shot's good. He is dominating this quarter. He sees a soft spot in the D, and he's attacking. Larkin kicks to Morris. Makes the bucket. Now he's got five field goals, five for eight in the game. Uh, and even with someone on, Morris is just a master at getting those shots over him. Just an impressive player down low. Here's Wells. And it's off from three-point range. Celtics trail by 20. One second separating the shot clock and game clock. Here's Larkin, defended by Beverly. Now Tatum, 13 points in the game. Clock at four. Here's Morris. And the shot no good, a bit short. And as we conclude the third quarter, pretty much a blowout. It's been a one-sided affair. The Clippers on top, running away with this one. And we're just moments away from the start of the fourth quarter. Stay with us. Don't miss the high-flying action this All-Star Saturday night as the NBA's top slam dunk specialists do battle in the slam dunk contest. Let's hear what Doc Rivers has going on over in his huddle. Come on, let's keep it going. The ball movement is good, Doc. We're getting great shots, but we're giving up too many shots. Exchanging baskets is what Doc is talking about. That's not what he's looking for, asking his guys to clamp down on defense. Yeah, I mean, he wants it all. Sees an opportunity for his team to kind of dominate here a little bit and, and wants them to just take full advantage. And 
we're rolling here again with the fourth quarter. Might not come down to the wire, but you never know. Rozier is out there with Shane Larkin. Then there's Brown. Then it's Tatum. And it's Morris in at the center position. That's the Boston Five. Here's Rozier. Morris a screen. Rozier kicks to Brown. They set the pick. It's a mark, so he gets the whistle. Contact on the way up, and two shots coming up. That one on Gallinari. So Brown is just fearless, Kevin. I mean, especially when it comes to going right into the contact. Swingman Jalen Brown trying to find his way in the league. It had a really good playoff last year, and uh, it's kind of a renaissance man. Plays the guitar, studies foreign languages. Uh, is captain of his high school chess team, but he doesn't want none of me, though. You know, I'll get him in chess. And the first one drops. And even though they're down, they are putting on a show at the free throw line. And he can't hit the second. Well, we always hear about how some guys are locker room leaders or a veteran presence on a team. Chris, how quickly does someone establish themselves as a team leader? It's universally embraced by the rest of the team. It's tough. You know, some guys can come in and do it day one. But I think that we've seen a lot of leaders grow, whether it was a great leader like a two-time MVP in Nash. It took some years first for him to understand himself and then kind of let his leadership uh, just you follow that on the court. We bring that to today with a guy like John Wall. It's taken him about four or five years to really learn to be around veterans. But guys are coming in younger now. And so uh, I think that it's going to take a little bit of time to develop. But as long as they're continuing to learn, as long as they're continuing to put the effort out, because you're a leader first by what you do, not by what you say. And so if you are trying to figure your way out and work hard, then you're being a leader. People are figuring it out. It's usually when does the vocal part come in, uh, along with uh, kind of leading by an example. And so I think for every person it's different. But it's a lot of fun watching because when they get to that point, you've definitely seen some development and grow from them mentally and physically when you know they're taking over the reins like the guy like John Wall has. Good insight. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. Right side Griffin lets it go from deep and DJ gets it to go on the assist by Griffin. DJ's got 29 in the game. Uh, and DJ makes some quick decisions. When the D isn't up on him, he burns them with the catch and shoot, Jimmy. We're about two minutes into the fourth quarter in this one. Hayward goes in, drops it in from 11 feet. That's just another one for Hayward. He's built up his body. Now he has the strength and endurance to score at will. Alinari outside. Left side, Griffin. Fires for three. And again, the triple from DJ. DJ's got 32 points. Yeah, the D with very little pressure on their perimeter shooters. Three of the last five baskets they've allowed have been from beyond. And it's Rozier missing. LA's gotten off to a great start from three-point range in the final quarter. They're a perfect three of three. DJ passes to Griffin. It's interesting to see the impact of technology on the game, too. I heard LeBron James. A lot of players now review footage on a tablet when they check out their play. Well, yeah, you know, back in the older days, a lot of... Uh, went to the locker room and you would go in the room and watch it on video so it's the same um, type premise it's just that you know technology is better today I mean every guy wants to do it you want to know what you're doing well what you're doing wrong you're all the coach on the floor you're the quarterback and, and LeBron especially is the quarterback of his offense so it doesn't surprise me before he uh, that he studied tape time call here the Celtics decide to talk it over yeah he, he's got to make some adjustments here just too easy to score in the lane against them right now well, well, I think the first thing they need to talk about are the rotations. There's a lot of miscommunication out there. Both 
both teams will make substitutions. And just about three minutes through the fourth quarter here. From the arc, nice shot by Yabuzele. I mean, that's just tremendous, stupendous work from Rozier. I mean, he's just so good at zipping the ball over to his teammates. The dish to Decker. Ball stolen. And pushing it up, here's Boston. Throws down off the coast at Coast Drive. Leaving the rest of the field in the dust. Well, while he's out there making the play, everyone else is watching. Solid individual effort right there. And that replay presented by Under Armour showing us the fantastic steal that led to that fast break finish. Another unleashed chaos moment. Yeah, nice effort there in tracking down the long rebound. Over three and a half minutes through the final quarter now. Rogier kicks to Hayward. And the game and the culture of basketball has so many subsets. One of those is the basketball shoe culture, the sneaker culture. Players competing almost as much, Chris, for style points as they are for actual points. Oh, yeah, you know, and, and I love to say that I was part of that culture, you know, uh, with the black socks and, and with some different shoes that I've had at the NBA. It's a lot of fun, man. It's just something that your fans can relate to. It's something personal. It shows a personal side of what you have, your type of design. So, you know, you're very fortunate if you get your own uh, kick deal, and uh, I was fortunate. It's a lot of fun, and, uh, and the fans love it. Guys, they're just getting outworked. I mean, plain and simple. It's got to be more of a collective effort to secure that backboard. The pass to Nader. There's a good screen. It's up a three. And Gordon Hayward, good for three. Hayward's got five points now this quarter. Uh, he is shooting the lights out from outside. Harold dishes to DJ. Rivers kicks to DJ. The Clippers rebound. They are really crashing the offensive glass, and it's paying off. For them. Yeah, nice, strong finish there. Nearly a three-point opportunity. At the line for the Clippers, will he be two shots? Shooting two. And he makes the first. Chris, bench celebrations can be seen as showing up the other team. Is there a balance in your mind of how players can celebrate without maybe uh, rubbing it in the other team's face? I mean, this isn't baseball. You know, if it was if basketball was baseball, if we hit a home run, then we could trot, turn around, spin. We, we don't, you know, you have respect for your players by how hard you play against them, by preparing for them, by, uh, you know, not playing dirty. But basketball, no, no, no. Uh -uh. No, it's, it, the culture is in the parks. The culture is the guys that play, and uh, the bench should have as much fun. I love watching the benches go crazy. Think of how hard those guys on the bench work all season long and may never get in. What's wrong with being hyped for your teammates? No, I don't, I don't think it should be turned. I love it. Actually, I think some of these benches need to turn it up even more. Hopefully, uh, we get a better show on the bench. Rivers kicks to DJ. Tips it, and Griffin stays with it. Griffin's got 22. And you can see the second chance points now starting to be a major factor. The Celtics have gone 5 of 10, 50% from the field. Irving. Tight defense on him. They set the pick. High arcing shot. Can't hit that one. Griffin with some nice D for Los Angeles. They've gone through the fourth quarter shooting 50%. 7 of 14. Fires the three. Los Angeles keeping it alive. Fresh 24. They shoot again. A nice shot by Reed. I'm sorry. That's poor defense down low again. It's been a mismatch thus far in the paint. Boston's gone a disappointing 2 of 6 on three-point attempts here in the fourth. Irving with the ball. Now guarded by DJ. And Baines kicks to Irving. Pulls it from 20. And that one, good. 
Irving's got 10 points in just the second half. And I love the momentum he's building. Last game, he, he was just as dominant. And defensively, you know he's feeling good right now. And, and as the opposing team, you better adjust your scheme accordingly. Absolutely the prettiest play in basketball executed to perfection. I don't think you'd get an argument there. Everybody loves the alley-oop. Launches a three. And it's Reed pulling it down. And for the Clippers, they're shooting at 51%. Really so. Feeds it to DJ. Griffin a screen on Hayward. Three is no good there from DJ. Not really his best quarter as far as scoring. Let, let's see if he can eventually get back on track. The defense ready for him on that possession. They had to be because he is so strong in the paint. Griffin kicks to DJ. Here's Teo Dosich, defended by Hayward. Great open look there. 14 points for Austin Rivers. And when you're down this many points, hard to justify leaving a good shooter that wide open. Well, the game looks like it's starting to wear on them. Unable to get out, defend the perimeter, unfocused. This is a bad sign. Pass to Smart. Come on, shoot! Falls back and drains the fadeaway jumper. Oh, the mid-range game, a lost art. Nice bucket by Smart. DJ kicks to Griffin. To the left side wing. Reed with it. Baines is there. Buries the long-range jumper. And now that's 35 points for DJ. He continues to be their go-to guy. If they close this game out, his stamp will be all over this. There's the screen. Hayward outside. And we've seen a few players come into the NBA through different paths. They're playing overseas for a year or we're spending time in the D League, now known as the G League. Chris, do you think that these alternative paths to the NBA will ever be as common as the standard collegiate path to the NBA? Well, I think it can be only because there's such an international presence in the game and that now you're starting to find players all over. And the great thing about the NBA is it doesn't matter where you come from. It just matters what type of skill set that you have. So um, I can't see it being other paths to the NBA, uh, but the NCAA is always going to be one in the fact that guys want to play for their uh, state teams and that's always going to be fun to watch. But thank God for basketball fans and athletes, there's a lot of uh, paths to the NBA, which is the ultimate if you want to play basketball. Absolutely. Teodosic, the pass to DJ. Drains it from beyond the arc. DJ's got 38 points. Their third three-pointer in a row. Come on, shoot! Outside Irving. Hayward from outside. And it's Reed pulling it down. Reed's got rebound number 12 here already in the game. To the inside, and the slam by Blake Griffin. You've got to be on exactly the same page to connect on that long of an alley-oop. Yeah, and even then, it's a tough play. And here's Irving. They set the screen. Dishes it to Bain. It's hauled in by the Clippers. Reed's got 13 rebounds in the game. Class eating. A quick shot there, and it's off target. Boston shooting 43% from the floor. They've been looking out of sync offensively. Yeah, the, the, their offense has ground to a standstill. They were on the wing. Shot clock at six. Again, the miss by Hayward. The Clippers shooting very well right now, 52% in this fourth quarter. And stolen by Hayward. And now Irving pushing it up, no one back to stop him. And as we head to the final buzzer here, a crushing blowout. Big time dominance, and, and this will go in the record books as a gouty win for the Clippers. And this was one that never really was in doubt, I thought, an all-around dominant performance. And you kind of thought that maybe even going into the game. Yeah, there was a sense of that. And, man, they, they just pretty much blew them right out 
of the water. A clinic was put on display here today. And these guys already with 45 wins on the year. So tonight we'll make it 46. And with this win, it gives them a sweep of the season series, even though it's just a brief two game. And as one might have guessed coming into this game, it was indeed another big game tonight for DJ. He had those defenders shaking their heads. There were times when they thought they had a handle on him. And then just like that, he'd go off on another tip. Riven's shot is off. Well, I'm sure he thought that was good when they left his fingertips. As a matter of fact, I know he did. Fires from 18. Good on the shot. Oh, I love seeing Irving get cooked. He's an elite scorer who can fill it up fast. Pass to Teodosic. There's the feed to DJ. A three ball. Rebound Boston. To the middle. Deflects the pass. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touched by Rivers. And defensively, great anticipation making a play there on the ball. And don't forget about the good hand-eye coordination. I mean, he almost corralled it in for the steal. Pass to Nader. With the floater, Decker with the rebound. And you know what? You can't get a better screen. Frees him up beautifully, but he just fails to capitalize. <laughs> the best laid plans, right? Well, I tell you right there, though, that's one they'll take every single time. So it's Los Angeles winning this one easily. Hey, DJ. Hey. Great game out there. Look, Shaq and the guys want to talk to you in the studio. Really? So stand, yeah, right this way. Uh, stand here, okay. and we'll get you set up. Perfect. That's good. Hey, what's up? This is Kenny. You look great out there in that win. And I believe you set a season high in scoring, young man. Is it fair to call this your most complete game? Wow, Kenny. I did not know about that season high. Thank you. Uh, you know, it just it felt good on the floor offensively, but uh, I, I knew there were a few defensive positions where I, I could have been sharper. And really, I'm just happy to contribute to the team when I'm out on the floor, and I, I think I was able to do that tonight. Well, you did a great job of it. Keep up the good work.